Hello, hello, hello? Yes? All right. So, let's get started. So I'm gonna say, so my name is Fernando Sosa. I am uh, the managing uh, partner of Worry Free MD, also known as HeyOnTech.com. We're an IT consulting company. We're a Microsoft partner. And we provide computer maintenance and network support, cybersecurity protection for medical practices. So we focus on HIPAA compliance and security. So uh, here's the agenda. Again, I'm going to talk about ransomware, uh, how it's spread. Uh, I'm going to give you a nice prevention checklist. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about ransomware insurance on the quote. It's not really an, really an insurance, but it's, uh, it's something that you, you, you need to be aware of. Ending with Q&A and then next steps. Okay, so I'm gonna try to uh, uh, adjust my presentation for uh, business users and non-business users, so it's in general. It's about ransomware. Everybody's affected by ransomware, okay? So, like I said, in the news, if you're watching the news, the late night news, the morning news, it doesn't matter, you're gonna hear about ransomware. Many, many businesses uh, are affected, but also what doesn't show up on the news are the actual personal you know, individuals that get affected. Th those don't make the news. But that's happening every single day. Like I said, in May last month, it was there was a big, big incident, and uh, that raised a lot of more awareness about this, uh, this problem. And it's not going away. So how a ransomware infection happens? So let me start by explaining a little bit what ransomware is. Ransomware is a type of virus, a type of malware. That means it's a program, it's a software. Somebody, some hackers, developed a software that, that does harm to other people's computers. Those are viruses. Viruses have many types of names, many types of variations, many types of consequences. Ransomware is a type of malware. What, that, what it does is it takes, once your computer gets infected, it looks for all your data on your computer and all the computers connected to your computer and your network, and it encrypts your data. Encryption means that it takes your data and it makes it unreadable. And the only way to get your data back to a readable format is that the attackers, the hackers, give you an option to pay, to pay, to pay them for you to get your, your data back. That's where ransom comes into play. Basically, they, they hold your data hostage. Okay, so how does this happen, and, how, and, and, and how, what can you do to prevent this? And, or if it happens to you, how can you recover? An example here, I'm gonna talk about a couple of things, but one of the uh, 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 things that happen often is you get emails with attachments or links, and you click on the link or you open an attachment, and the attachment happens to have a malware attached to it. This is an example of a Word document that gets opened and you all of a sudden, you, just, you got the Word document, you open it, and you don't think about it twice. You see a message that says security warning and enable, and you click on enable, bam, you're infected with some type of malware. And then you can, and you don't know about it, you continue, the message goes away, you continue working on your document, you save it, you go about your, the, your day, and next thing you know, the, the, the malware is in the back end, in the background, doing damage. And when it's finished doing the damage, the ransomware pops up a message and says, basically, they're done. It says, you've been infected with the ransomware, you have so many days to pay us, or your data gets lost forever. That's basically the scenario, how it works. So this is an example of what you might see. And, and the problem is, I'm gonna get to how, this, how do you get this. So that's just an example there. This is an example of a, uh, of a message that you get, when you get after you get infected. Very, uh, I would say, ugly looking message, but this is, this is a real example. And there's different versions of, of ransomware, different types of messages, but overall, you're gonna get a, a message, a warning, you get a, a, a timer, where basically you have so much time left. It tells you how, how to pay, how to pay them to recover, and it basically scares you into you know, taking action. That's a typical, and that's the only thing you can do after you get infected. You cannot get your data back. You, can, you can't access your data unless you respond to this in some way. And I'll get to that now. So hopefully you'll never, you'll never get that. So, so how does this affect? Last year, this was huge. I'm talking about this year, but last year was huge. This year is not stopping. Billions of dollars in downtime and productivity were, was, effect, what, what, caught, was caused by ransomware. And, this, this cost is, 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 uh, is calculated by 
when you have a ransomware attack, you're, you shut down your business for, for hours, days, even weeks, if you're ever to recover. And having a business closed for a number of days because of this problem costs money because you have to pay employees, you have to pay everything that you pay to keep the, fix the lights on, et cetera, et cetera. So for personal reasons as well, it costs you, you know, to, to be basically without your information for a number of times. So it, it costs a lot of money worldwide. And uh, the thing about this, these statistics are that the statistics are not complete. One out of four incidents are not reported. One in four are reported. Uh, excuse me. One in four. That means that not everybody reports ransomware when it happens. And like I said before, on the personal level, it doesn't make the news. So you don't know about those statistics. So if I say so many, so much money was, was lost and so many businesses were affected, so many people, that's not the whole picture. It's more than that because not everything is reported. So it's a big, big, big problem. And like I said before, it affects all industries. It's not just one industry, in healthcare, professional services, manufacturing, on the personal, everybody is affected. Everybody that has a computer is affected or can be affected by this problem. So, and another thing to mention is cloud is also affected. If you have data in the cloud, that has also been a problem so, because data that goes in the cloud can also be because of the synchronization, right? If your data is infected in your computer and, and it gets encrypted, that encryption gets synced to the cloud, and now your data in the cloud is, in, is also encrypted. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a better way to save it in the cloud, definitely, and there's other measures that, that, that you can use to help yourself. But also, just keep that in mind that that is also um, an area where ransomware gets affected, because the data gets, gets, gets encrypted up there as well. So, um, so, like I said, it's a big, big problem. And just because you have antivirus and, and anti-malware, it's not 100%. Okay? I'm, not, I'm not here to scare you. I'm, I'm here to tell you the facts. That's why all these, this problem happened, because it's not 100%. There's always a chance to get infected. And, there's, and uh, one of the biggest problems why companies get infected and people get infected is not by, because of technology. It's because of human error our lack of training, our, our basic computer uh, skills, our computer awareness of what to do, what not to do, etc. So that's a big problem, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in, on my checklist. So, uh, so that's, 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 so the most common type of ransomware is called crypto locker. You might have heard of that name, that's kind of like the king of ransomware, it's, kind of, it's, it's very popular at all, and there's a lot of variations of ransomware that, that came about from this uh, type of ransomware. It might, it might sound the same, it has a name like crypto something, crypto this, uh, but uh, crypto locker is, is pretty much the, most, the common one. So, uh, number, number one cause of infection, phishing emails and training, lack of training. Phishing emails, phishing, does anybody know what phishing is, phishing email? Yeah. Phishing email is emails that you receive that appear to come from a legitimate source, but it's not. It's a fake email that comes to you pretending to be from UPS, the post office, the IRS, FedEx, a, a known source, a vendor, Amazon. It's a fake email that a hacker creates, sends to you. It disguises the email as one of these companies that you know and it tricks you into clicking on a link in the email or opening an attachment in the email. And like I said before, the email attachment and the link takes you to an infected website or to an infected file. And that's what's called a phishing email. And it's very, very effective, very, very popular. Why is it effective? Because it's, it, it, it's, it's a psychological game that they play because you're getting an email you don't think about it twice. Oh yeah, I, I recognize this. It's coming from FedEx. I'm expecting a package. It's Christmas. How many packages aren't delivered? Aren't you expecting, right? All of a sudden you get a, you get a, a, an email from your from FedEx, or it's tax season. Oh, all of a sudden you get an email from the IRS. Something is wrong with your taxes. Oh, what's the problem? Click it, and you click on it. That's it. So they, they take advantage of this uh, psychological uh, factor into and for you to open the, these emails and get infected. So that's phishing, that happens all the time. And the other one is, is, is training, basic, basic uh, knowledge, uh, lack of knowledge of what to do, what not to do, what systems to use, etc. 
here's an example of a phishing email that I received. And I said, let me copy this and, and show it to you. It's an email. I'm looking at it right away. It looks like it's coming from Office 365, right? And, and, and it's not. You know, if you read it, if you read it, you pay close attention, you might get, you might see the signs that this is a phishing email. Can anybody tell me what's, can, can you see what, a, a red flag here? Yes? After the ad, very good. In the address bar, who said, who's it coming from? It says something, something at, at Ikea.com. Ikea.com, what's the, you know, that bling bling red flag. Okay? But again, if you don't take a moment, a second to look, you might say, oh, you just see the logo, the color, it's really recognize it, click, and you click. That's it. You're done. So that's an example of a phishing. And this was this, this was simple. Some of them are easy, are more harder to, 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 to track, to see, to detect. Um, this was obvious to me. Sometimes the English is broken, sometimes it just doesn't look right. Uh, but some of them are very good, very good, and they, they get they get you. Some, some, some emails can't even come from a friend, somebody that you know, not just a company, a friend. If you're infected with the malware, and that's a type of malware, tech checks your address book, and all of a sudden starts sending emails to your contacts, so that your contacts get emails from you, supposedly, with, with malware, and that's how it spreads, okay? That's how it spreads. So. So how, how bad uh, can it be for business? Well, like I said, I mean, if, if a business is, is infected, yes. it, it basically closes them down. And it's very hard for them to recover, very hard, because it costs a lot of money if you lose your data. And, and uh, um, it's, very, it's very, very hard to recover. So here's my prevention uh, checklist for you. The first thing is, uh, there are nine items. The first thing is spam. Spam email, like I said, is one of the biggest problems. Uh, it's very cost effective for the hackers because they, they just send it out randomly, thousands and thousands, billions of people get it, and statistically somebody will fall for it. Okay, so you, you, uh, there's methods to prevent spam, to tweak, modify your, your spam filter. There's software for businesses. Uh, at my level, for companies, we have solutions. Uh, uh, for spam, spam filtering solutions. Uh, for consumers, you have that. You, you have what you have at Office 365. It has some some spam filtering. Um, so spam email is very important for you to understand that uh, the, the, the reason that they're spam there's, there's money to be made from the hackers one way or, or another, and it's it's a big problem in how uh, you get infected by uh, uh, viruses. Passwords. Very easy. This is a very easy thing to address. Don't have simple passwords. Breaches occur, a lot of breaches occur because of the complexity of the passwords. They're basically not complex at all. Stop using password one, two, three. Stop using your name. Stop using your kid's name. Stop using your, your birthday. These are known, uh, known information about you that is easily, easily uh, used by hackers. And that happens all the time, okay? So, and it's easy to fix. Just make your passwords complex. And some sites actually force you to make it complex. And, and also, in addition to that, you wanna change your password frequently, frequently uh, because passwords are, uh, you know, it's the best practice to change them. And in addition to that, excuse me, uh, <clears throat> You don't want to use the same password in all the websites. Don't use the same passwords for your bank, for your email, for your uh, office. You have to have different passwords for different systems. If one site gets hacked, then they have your password, then that password is used randomly in all these other places. Your question? To undo it, on the uh, if you're saving the password, it, uh, if there's probably something uh, saved on your computer, uh, a cookie or something that you can clear the cookie, and it won't recognize your browser as being the person that signed on. So that, and it depends on the website. So they have different mechanisms to save passwords. But,
Yeah, you, you can actually go and find it. Uh, you can also go to the website and uh, try to log in with a different password, and maybe that will clear the, 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 the previous password. But it's, it's different from site to site. Yeah. One of the problems with the password has been changing often is that it's so many. Uh, yeah. Is there a way that you can safely uh, change more than one at a time without being concerned? Yeah, it's a, it's a predicament. It's like, you know, it's like if you have a key in your house, if you have so many locks, you have so many keys. How do you keep track of all these keys? And if you change one key and you have five family members, you have to make sure that everybody gets the right key. You know, so managing all these keys is a kind of the same problem with passwords. All these websites now I'm telling you have to change your passwords every so often, have a different passwords. So it's a it's a it's a management nightmare. There are tools, <clears throat> software tools, that you can use to manage passwords. Uh, and you basically save the password in this tool, and the tool uh, helps you. Uh, change the password, you don't even have to remember all the individual passwords, they create the complicated passwords, so you just remember like a master password. And, uh, there are risks of risk involved with that, <clears throat> but I, I, I use that myself, um, and uh, because, again, it's very difficult to manage all the passwords. Yes. Backing you up a second. We all know about spam now, how do you recognize something yeah. There's different there's different different ways. Um, one way is check is just going is just scanning a visual scan. You, you, you'll see something, but you have to kind of uh, know what you're looking for. You can look at the subject. You can put your mouse over the link, not click on it. Put your mouse over the link, and usually you get a little pop of that that tells you where the link goes. You'll see right away if it's a, some some strange random letters that takes it to a strange website, you know it's a problem. So if you put your mouse over the link, don't click on it, you'll see where it goes. That's a way to safely know uh, that, that, it's, that, that it's not bad. If it has an attachment, be wary, beware. If it has an attachment, especially if it has an HTML attachment, but also Word, PDFs, etc. So, yeah. All right, let me move on. So, computer updates. <coughs> This, is, this was a big problem that happened last month. Hundreds of companies got affected. It was, it was because of an update that was, that was released in March. So all these computers in, in May got infected because they weren't updated with the March update. And yeah, so updating your computers, not just the operating system, but your software, everything that's running is, is critical. It's critical because if, you, if your computer is not up to date, then uh, you can be vulnerable. That can be vulnerable to some type of uh, uh, vulnerability that's discovered later on. And hackers are a business. Hackers uh, are not people that are just sitting doing this as a hobby. They're a business. They track software and they scan and they try to find to how to break into software. And they make it a business. They have a business. Really, they certainly have, they have a calendar of what to do based on the, on the, on the holidays. They know when to send certain emails. They know, uh, you know, so it's a, it's a serious business. So you want to, you know, protect yourself by having your computers up to date. If you're a business and you have multiple computers, it becomes difficult to manage, and that's where you get an outsourced IT provider like myself to help you with managing the, all these computers and servers and all these software. Uh, so computer updates is very critical. Training, like I mentioned before, uh, is, is basically employee training, uh, uh, how, you know, what to click on, what not to click on, what to email, what not to email, what websites to go to, what not to, these are kind of things that you can uh, avoid being uh, uh, breached or being hacked if there's some basic training uh, given. Advanced security, again, this is more for the businesses. That, that requires the staff to actually uh, use these sophisticated tools that are for larger corporations that uh, have more, more to do with the security. I'm not gonna get more into that. A firewall uh, in your house, you should, and of course in your business, you should have your, your first level of defense from the outside world is a firewall. Uh, typically as a home user, you probably have a, you know, a router, some type of router that has firewall capabilities, and that's as much as you can have. Uh, for the businesses, we recommend a, a business grade a firewall. It's more advanced, it has more protection, and it, and the thing about firewalls is that the firewalls have to be updated as well. You don't just buy a firewall 
and, and not update it, you set it and forget it. You have to maintain it. And typically that's done by the IT provider that maintains the files. So that's the first line of defense with firewall. <coughs> Encryption. Encryption is your safe haven. If, if you encrypt your data, and Windows has uh, the encryption tool called BitLocker, if you encrypt your data and, and your laptop is, is, is lost or stolen, your data is, 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 is more protected because the data is not readable by the person who takes your computer because you encrypted it. It's kind of the same concept as a, as a ransomware, right? The attackers, they encrypt your computer, and for you to get it back, you have to give them something. But if you encrypt your computer, if you're proactive and you encrypt your computer, uh, that helps you in, in the event that your data is lost or stolen. It still doesn't prevent you from getting a ransomware attack because they can encrypt your, your encrypted data. Yes, yes. But that didn't stop anybody using my laptop. It only stopped if I made copies of it. So if anybody got my computer, if they had access to everything that was working, yeah. if they, so that doesn't really help it, it helps if your data, if, if somebody gets your computer and they cannot log into your computer, then it's okay. the data, well, it's, Logging into the computer is one level of protection, but the drive itself, let's say I take your laptop and I, I take the physical drive and I take it out and I put it on my, another and I have a I'm not logging into your computer. I'm opening your computer and taking the drive and putting it on another computer. I have the data. If it's encrypted, I can't get it. Yeah. But if they have it, they have it. No, if they, if they get into your computer with your login account, because the encryption is tied to your, to your credentials. Yes. It depends on the, on, the, on the ransomware. There's no rules. This is the wild, wild west. Typically, it just takes the data. And um, but, but again, it's um, the, yeah, the programs are not a lot of problems. The data. But, but there's no one, I mean, well, I can say one thing now, and there's, there can be tens of thousands, of, you know, hundreds of other ransomware that do it differently, but typically the data is, is encrypted. I have Norton 365. Does that help with all this? There's, it's not 100%, like I said, the viruses and, and antivirus programs is not 100%. It does protect you, but it's not 100%. All right, so let, let's uh, almost, let me get down to the checkpoint, and then we'll finish up with the Q&A. All right, the next one is risk assessment. This is more on the business side, something to, to analyze uh, your whole network and basically cover all the, uh, all the bases to check where is it that you have risks, where do you have security risks. In the medical industry, there's something called HIPAA, which is a federal law uh, that they require medical practices to do this type of risk assessment. So that's what that is. Uh, and then backup. Backup is your, your what I was calling the ransomware insurance. If all else fails, if all else fails, you have to rely on a good backup solution. Okay? If all your, your, your prevention fails, backup is what you will be able to recover. And when you hear in the news that somebody recovered from a backup, from a, from a ransomware, it's because they had a, a backup solution that worked. Okay, so wrapping up, uh, like I said, backup is the best uh, uh, for prevention uh, in the event that you do get infected. So that's your checklist. If you want to download that, you can download that checklist. There's a link there. You can ask me for a link, and you can download the checklist. So share what you learned, take action, and uh, don't be a victim. So if I'm going to continue now, if you have any questions, thank you very much.
Thank you.